Hello everybody, I'm Tom and you are watching me play Warframe. Uh, today, I'm going to do a kind of quick video on Wukong. It's essentially just going to be the same format as my build videos. Um, however, Wukong Prime is coming out as probably the next, or if not the next, the one after, Prime Frame. Um, so I've held off on doing a full, fo granted, I pretty much fully formed him, I need like one or two more former. Um, but I'm going to show off his new abilities and stuff and just show off the rework as well in this video. Um, first things first, as always, go over the abilities, and they have all changed quite significantly for Wukong, so it's worth looking at them. Uh, passive is, after taking fatal damage, Wukong automatically uses one of his mastered survival techniques. These techniques can be invoked three times per mission, so essentially there's three times a mission where if you die, you just come back to life. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty OP. Again, another, similar to, um, Nidus, he's in a Warframe that is just immune to death, which is kind of brilliant. And works with his theme of like uh Sun Sun Wukong. Uh but if we go on to his first ability is a Celestial Twin. You create literally just a clone of yourself that has a bunch more health than you do. It does double the damage you do. Granted it has dumb AI, so it's not necessarily using that damage as effectively as it could be. But honestly, if you're using your four it will do a spin attack every now and then and kill a hundred enemies, so what difference does it make? Um, it's a very, really, really cool ability, and again, makes sense with the theme, because, of course, in the legend, he could easily create twins of himself, he could create clones. Um, I'll re read the actual description as well. Sharing part of himself, Wukong creates a twin to fight side by side. Attack at range and the twin will melee. Pull a melee and the twin will lay down covering fire. Use again to command the twin to attack the target with increased damage. Yeah, pretty much it. Uh, if you want to get rid of your twin, you push and hold one. We'll uh, get rid of the twin as well, which is nice to know. Uh, his second ability, Cloudwalker. Uh, similar to what Cloudwalker used to be, except now it's it's not like a toggleable thing where you go into Cloudwalker and then go out of Cloudwalker. You go into Cloudwalker and there's a time limit. As you can see here, mine's just under five seconds. But you go very, very fast compared to what you used to do in Cloudwalker. It makes it so much more useful. I love it. Um, I love this ability here. Also, if you go through enemies, it will, like, daze them, which is also nice. It also heals you as well, which is also nice, but on my build, kind of irrelevant. Um, and it heals you based on how far you travel. So the longer duration you have, obviously, the further you can travel, therefore, the more you can heal. But honestly, you're going to get to full health no matter what, even if you have this on, like, base duration, because you just go so fast that you will travel the distance to heal enough. Um... Again, really cool ability. Uh, third, his Defy. Um, it's not the same as it used to be. It used to be a toggle ability that just made you immune to death. That's the immune to death is now like weaved into his passive and Defy instead will give you an armor buff with all the damage. You essentially go invincible for however long your duration is. Mine goes for about, again, five seconds. And all the damage you take will then confer into an armor bonus afterwards, which again, adds to his survivability kind of hugely. Uh, but Wukong and his twin become invulnerable and defy enemies to attack. All damage is captured, stored, and dealt back in a single furious strike of Wukong's staff. Bonus ar armor is then granted relative to the damage captured. Um, as you can see here, the armor duration is over a minute, just over a minute. Uh, the multiplier is 2.76 times, so whatever the damage you take, you double, well, nearly triple that, and that's how much armor you get. Um... The damage multiplier that you get is 13.8 times on my current build, which is kind of ridiculous. Um, so the actual hit with the staff will kill pretty much anything. Uh, but honestly, it's mainly there for the extra, extra armor. And then finally, as Primal Fury, which is pretty similar to what it used to be. You get out your BR staff. Um, the main difference here being that um, it's got like the new combo multiplier, the new combo system. So there's like uh, four different combos that you can do with it, um, depending on what directions you're pushing and all that sort of stuff. But I'll go on to the build. <laughs> this build here is pretty ridiculous. Um, the, the reason that it's pretty ridiculous is the fact that I have a full Umbral build here and you really don't need Umbral Fiber because because of his three where he can get huge amounts of armor, you really, really don't need Umbral Fiber. Um, I've got it in here for a couple of reasons. One, I like the, f the fact that he's just literally unkillable like this. Um, and secondly, it also buffs the Umbral Intensifier and the Umbral Vitality. So, like, having this 
I, I just think it's cool. I like having full umbral builds, alright? Don't judge me. Uh, but first thing first, got still charge. Um, an oddity for me, as most of you know, I usually go for pressure projection, but one, I needed the extra mod spots that still charge gives you, because it's 18 rather than uh, 14. Uh, but also, uh, Wukong's 4 is a melee weapon, so increased melee damage is also really, really good on him. So that's the thing. Uh, we have Mobilize. This is just the movement mod I can fit in here. It's three points. So this is a rank one Mobilize, so I can fit it in here. Again, I could put, uh, use a former on this slot to get a max Mobilize in here. Um, the downside to that being that Wukong Prime is coming out at some point, and it feels like just a waste of a former. Uh, Arcanes, Arcane Aegis, Arcane Nullifier. Just standard stock shit. Uh, Prime Continuity for Ability Duration. Adds 50 to it. August Secrets for Ability Strength. Stretch for Ability Range. Hunter Adrenaline to get energy back when you take health damage, which is really, really good with Wukong, because as you can see in a second, I have 1500 health. Um, Narrow Minded is, again, a bunch of duration, and it cuts down your range. We then have Umbral Vitality for plus 700% health, Umbral Vitality for plus 60% ability strength, and Umbral, Vita uh, Umbral Fiber for 175% armor. Um, as you can see here, if we get rid of Umbral Fiber, it brings us down to 250 health and 1200, uh, 1200 health and 250 armor. Also lowers my strength a bit. Honestly, this would be fine, and then you could add whatever the hell else you wanted in here. There are pl plenty of other things that could go in here and be really, really good. But I just like having the, uh, I'll just go to Umbral, it's easier. Um, I like having this Umbral Fiber on, because having this much armor means you don't even have to use your three in high level stuff. Like, you can, and it gives you even more armor, but it's completely unnecessary. Uh, this is the uh, the easy build, essentially. You're never going to die, that's for sure. Again, level 50 test, completely and utterly irrelevant here. I would go higher than 145, but I can't. So we can simulate here. Let's get my twin out. Cloud walk over to these guys. As you can see, you move quite fast. Uh, you can also end this early by using your melee attack. I'm going to hit my four. Whoops, fell off the edge, but honestly, not that much of an issue. Nearly died, use your cloud walk. In fact, I did die. You can see a mortal technique going off there. So one of my immortalities is gone, but I'm back at full health. Double teaming that guy, and I think they're all dead. Yeah, I'm pretty sure they're all dead. Otherwise, my my clone would be running. Oh, nope, one more. Now they're all dead. As you can see there, level 145 done without even an issue. I died once, but again, I can die three times without dying, without really dying. And also, if you're running low on health, you just hit cloud walk and you heal. Uh, the one thing I didn't show off. Which I guess I could. I'll, go, I'll do the test again. It's quick enough. Um, is the fact. Let's just simulate this again. If I want to make this even more ridiculous. You can hit your three. Yeah, okay. I now have an additional 1500 armor. <laughs> so... For a, for a minute, I've got another 1500 armor. They're not going to be able to kill me here. At, like, at all. I'm fine. You can see here that there's a bunch of different um, combos you can do with the staff. It's a regular combo just by hitting E. Uh, you can hold forward an E and he does this combo. I prefer the just regular E combo, it seems to be the best. Um, there is also a hold block and push E combo. And then finally, there is a hold block, push forward, and then E-combo. This one kind of sucks, in all honesty. It's a big stab, which goes a very long distance, it's worth noting. But, uh, and then he does a kick. But they're both kind of shit. Like, it's better to just bullet jump towards something than hit E. Because this hits, like, six times. This one attack. <laughs> it's, like, insane. Uh, but as you can see here, it says in the abilities that, um... 
when you're doing his one, he will do a melee weapon when you do a gun. However, if you're in your four, he will just pull out his four, which is really, really good because two Wukongs using their four is really, really good. Um, also, you'll notice that uh, my Wukong clone in the bottom right has uh, 1,100 shields and 5,500 health because of the multipliers on there. So he's never dying. He's only going to disappear if I make him disappear. I go like that. I can make him disappear. But that's Wukong. He's damn good, and I cannot wait for his prime. Um, again, my build, strictly speaking, isn't the best build, because I feel like Umbral Fiber is unnecessary, just because you can give yourself 1500, uh, 1,500 armor from uh, his three. So, like, I mean, I have over 2,000 armor when I use this and his three. Like, that's stupid. That's stupid amounts of armor. The effective health you have on there is, like, approaching a million? Like, it's ludicrous. Um, but the thing is... Actually, it's not approaching a million. It'd be approaching 100,000, right? Yeah, approaching 100,000. Um, but the thing is, I just like having this much survivability. And, like, as you can see, it's not like I'm suffering for anything else. The only thing I'm possibly missing is range. And that's about it. Uh, there's one last thing I have to show, which is the Iron Staff build. Because the Iron Staff is moddable, as, like, all exalted weapons are now. I almost forgot. Um, <laughs> but this is the build I have for it. It's just Condition Overload build, essentially. Uh, prime, prime Pressure Point, always needed on every melee weapon, because it's just more damage. We have Condition Overload. Uh, what Condition Overload does, I'm sure I've gone over this before, but I'll go over it again anyway, because it's a fairly rare mod that not a lot of people have. But you get 60% um, melee damage per status effect affecting the target that you're hitting. And obviously, we stack this with a bunch of status, therefore... You're going to have a lot of status when you're hitting things. Um, we have Prime Reach on here just to get more range. Um, it does seem to affect it. I'm not entirely sure. Like, I'm sure Prime Reach affects it. If it doesn't, I feel like they wouldn't allow you to put it on. But if someone knows that it doesn't, let me know and I can get rid of it. Because, you know, I could put something else here for more damage. Uh, we have Volcanic Edge for plus 60% heat damage and status chance. Uh, Vicious Frost, cold damage status chance. Uh, Virulent Scourge, Toxin Damage, and Status Chance. And then we have the uh, High Damaging Molten Impact and Shocking Touch. So, as you can see here, we're doing Radiation and Viral Damage. Um, that's going to be two status effects at least. Usually, if you're in a team, there's going to be a bunch of status effects otherwise, so that's doing at least an extra 120% damage. So it's like another Prime Pressure Point almost on top, just by using it normally. Um, lots and lots of damage, essentially. And it hits Primal Fury. It hits so many times. Like, there's a lot of multi-hits and all that, so it just does ludicrous amounts of damage. Uh, but anyway, that's going to be it. Uh, next time we're going to go Nova, which will be the correct, like, sort of moving back to my correct uh, build order of going in alphabetical order. I kind of went out for Wukong because I've been playing him a lot just since they reworked him. And God, he is fun. Like, I've just been playing him so much that I figured I'd do just a video showing how the rework has gone and... I'll do another proper build video when he comes along alphabetically, and by that time Wukong Prime will be out, I'm sure. Um, so yeah, if you like the video, please leave a like. If you're not subscribed already, please consider subscribing, and as always, thanks for watching, and I shall see you next time. Bye!